Hey traders, welcome to another global macro update. I'm going to be starting this video talking about the GDP that came out. So before we, yesterday we talked about the interest rates. They have not changed, staying at 25 basis points or 0.25%. And then the GDP came out today for the second quarter. Yes, it was better than the forecast, but the fact that we were down negative 32.9%, it was the worst in, in decades and decades. We'll look into that within this video. And then we also have CPI numbers for the euro. And then we had GDP numbers for Canadian uh, or Canada on Friday as well. So that'd be interesting to see. But then this is the US gross domestic product or GDP that took place and we can see this is the great financial crisis back in 2008-9 uh, right around there and we can see this is the quarterly and we're going to get into the historic GDP drops that we've seen in the past and we can see this is 2008 on a quarterly basis. So U.S. second quarter GDP falls at steepest rate since Great Depression. And this is a picture that represents it very well, I think. The U.S. economic boom and bust. So we can see this is 2020 Q2 at negative 32.9%. This was... Federal funds rate jumped to... So this was 2009, the Great Recession or Great Financial Crisis. Really is a complete blip compared to what we're seeing right now. And what we're seeing right now is pretty comparable to what we had in the 1929, the entire decade, the Great Depression, we had from 29 to around 30, and then we had World War II kind of bring us out of that Great Depression. But uh, we're seeing these numbers that we haven't seen in basically 90, uh, 100 years here, basically. So pretty unbelievable, but uh, I think that there's definitely a little bit of hope, optimism that is maybe something to do with FOMO and the fact that we're seeing a lot of retail traders come in, um, open up Robinhood accounts, it's never been easier. You can trade US stocks for free using Robinhood if you are living in the US, so it's never been easier to actually inject capital into the market. So the fact that uh, we're seeing this move to the upside and we're just continuously seeing buyers buy the dips, I think may come to an end. Uh, sooner rather than later i don't know exactly when the price action will tell us we haven't really seen a lower low and a lower high we have seen a lower high if you're looking at it but right now we're just in a sideways consolidation we'll talk about that later but uh, i think this is going to be a main player in the next possible leg to the downside and we have to understand that we have to anticipate it because moves to the downside are going to be a lot more volatile and they're going to be moving at a faster rate compared to the slow crawl up where the you know well lubricated machine is working well slowly making those nice higher highs and higher lows whereas the sell-offs the reason why uh, mainly is because the fact that emotions are more going to cater towards a faster sell-off because fear is a stronger emotion than greed you know, simple as that. Uh, algo traders have made it a lot more aggressive to the downside because they can trade in fractions of a second using algorithms, uh, short algo, but um, that's definitely a part of the reason is emotions are definitely a lot more swayed and a lot more volatile when you're, when you're fear, uh, when you're fearful, scared, worried, than if you're greedy and, and definitely uh, investing kind of mindset makes you patient to the upside, whereas emotions kind of make you less patient to the downside. So uh, going back to it, I'm just looking at the TikTok comments. Uh, user says, heck yeah, keep going. That's awesome to hear. So we do this every single weekday. So uh, we definitely try to provide as much value as possible. So I think this is the kind of title that is going to bring us as the next leg down, Vietnam braces for a fresh wave of coronavirus despite earlier success in containing the outbreak. So the South Asian countries have really done well. South Korea, Japan does well, Vietnam does well. And, you know, I think it's got a two, two reasons why I think that they do well. Uh, let's just take a look at Japan, who they, they've, been, they've been able to contain the virus a lot better than the Western countries. And it's because, one, they're more used to using masks, I think. If you go to a Asian country, you see masks and it's a pretty common sight. Whereas if you're living in Europe, Canada, 
Mexico, America, you're not really going to see masks all that often. Um, and the people who are wearing masks are probably going to be uh, people who are from the Asian nations in the South uh, Asian Sea, somewhere around there. So I think that's one reason. And then another reason, they're more compliant to government, uh, whereas the West, we're more, you know, freedom is, is really a, a vital part of our life, especially in America. They take pride in that, so they're going to say, why do I have to do it? I'm not getting sick. Whereas in some nations, they're more, uh, let's say, authoritative in how they manage their policies. The big guys just sold palladium and traded to gold. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, sorry, let's just look at how is silver going? Yeah, we'll definitely look at the metals. We'll look at gold, silver, gold and silver ratio, which has been a pivotal key tool that we've been using in order to understand the potential breakouts for silver. Uh, we really dive into the commodities. We do look at oil, although it hasn't really been doing anything. We did look at palladium and platinum a little bit earlier in the couple months, but they haven't really been moving a whole lot. I think uh, later on we will be trading them, but they're more volatile. They have higher spreads. It costs more to trade them. Um, and sometimes they'll just have spikes down, spikes up, and then take you out if you are using a stop loss. So uh, trading silver and gold, I think, is a little bit easier in terms of managing risk and stop losses. But, uh, you know, if you are looking for larger time frame moves on palladium and platinum, I think that's a good option as well. Yeah, for, and for those who do not know, uh, palladium and platinum are both metals mainly used for catalytic converters. I believe palladium is used for gas and platinum is used for diesel, I believe. I know one is doing extremely well. I believe palladium is the one that's doing extremely well and platinum is not doing nearly as well. Um, so that would then indicate that platinum would be used for diesel because gas is being a lot more used definitely in the Western world. So yeah, metals are definitely doing well. In 2025, when space money happens, metals will be astronomical. <laughs> Astronaut. That's a good one. I like that joke. All right, so that's the completion of the global macro side of things. We're now going to get into, well, the fundamentals in terms of global macro. We're now going to get into the technicals, looking at the price action of, of a, a bunch of different assets. I'll try to say that 10 times. So let's just take a step back here and look at what we're going to be looking at for the next four charts. We got the NASDAQ, we got the SMP, we got the Russell 2000, and then we got the VIX. So that's the volatility index for the SMP. And we always like to start off with the SMP, and then we'll go on to starting from the large time frames, work our way down, and then look at the different indexes to really get a good understanding of if we're in a risk off, risk on, or kind of neutral sentiment for the global markets. All right, so looking at the daily chart, we know that we got a nice ascending zone that's connecting the higher lows, holding our trend that is just continuing to the upside. We know that we broke on the daily chart and candle closed above the previous high on June 8th, and this is going to be the major level that we want to stick above. Currently, we're actually above it. We dug back up above the zone after we closed below it back in the 24th of July. So we're getting a little bit of noise where it's just really contracting in volatility and there's really not a whole lot moving. It's just going sideways. And in my opinion, we have to just wait to see what it does because right now there's not a lot of trend going on and that's a little bit difficult to trade in. But uh, this is going to be a pretty big indicator for the global sentiment. So let's kind of zoom in here and see what we're able to find within the candles. So this is, if we just take this away, the 3230 zone was a previous high that we were holding below, broke above, retested on the 23rd with a type B candle closure. We actually closed below it, which wasn't ideal. We traded below that key range, which was a little bit worrying, but we were able to hold the previous significant low back on 3200. We can see that was a previous resistance turned into support. So then that support was able to hold a little bit higher, creating a higher low than this low. And then we see that bullish engulfing candle engulf the previous three days on the daily chart. And then this next candle we do see was a little bit bearish to start off. The price came back and tested that support, but it does look like the buyers are able to not only hold it, but bring it back up to the uh, support there, holding it on the daily candle. So looking at the smaller time frames, 
we will see the price trend and go below the zone. But on the daily chart, we do see the fact that uh, the price was able to come back up and the buyers were able to not only hold it, but keep pressure on and push it above this major 3230 zone. So I'll close that and then we'll jump on the four hour chart. We do see these lows getting bought up, which is pretty, pretty good for the buyers. Although the fact that uh, let's just get our nice horizontal zone in there as well, just holding this high. So we're still making these nice higher lows, although we do see a nice double top that created the high. So this is gonna be a key level of resistance that we're gonna be looking for. And then we also see a high, a higher high, and a higher high. We just draw a trend line there, and that would create our ascending resistance zone. Well, it's not looking absolutely perfect. We do see a type A and then a type B candle closure right there. And then we're gonna get that red, and then we'll put a projection at that zone. We can also see it was a previous resistance too. Um, and if we look back, I'm sure it will be respected, but four zones and four rejections is enough for me to res to call it a respected area. All right, so we got a nice uh, little contraction and volatility here. And I do think that if we do get a move to the downside, it's gonna be quite aggressive. We can see the last time when it started moving to the downside, it really did not stop. Even on the four hour time frame. there's not a single candle that closed green from the 10th to basically, basically two trading days. It uh, did not close higher on the four hour chart. On the one hour, yeah, there was pullbacks for sure, but then we can see it was very, very aggressive. So then if we're looking at this zone, let's get our bars pattern and just understand previous consolidation. So then if we're going like this, looks pretty similar to, my, to, to me, to be completely honest. We've got a nice consolidation. And if we do get a move to the downside, I think that it would be pretty aggressive. And uh, we would be looking for opportunities to the downside. If we break below 3,200, I think that's a pretty good opportunity because we do see on the two hour, four hour, it was a previous low that was respected multiple times. If we don't actually trade above this zone right here, and if we stick below this zone, that would be a head and shoulders. So this would be the head right here. So let's draw it in using our head and shoulders pattern. So if we are able to hold the 30 to 25 ish range, that would be a head and shoulders pattern. That would be a pretty good opportunity for some short exposure in my opinion. But if we move above that zone, that would invalidate it, which wouldn't be ideal, but uh, you'd still be looking for possible sales in my opinion, if we book, break below this significant low. Let's just go back to the six hour. There could be a possibility because we have not fully broken yet. If it starts really ripping up and trading above this high, that would be possibly be a melt up in the squeeze that we're seeing here in a contraction and volatility where a squeeze would be a rip to the upside and then you start trading above this previous resistance as a new level of support in confluence with this uh, series of higher highs that gets broken. So you're accelerating in the move to the upside, which then you would try to hopefully carry that momentum and then that all time high may be your target, which would be pretty crazy. But I do not think that's gonna possibility. The price action is king, especially in these uncertain times where the economy and the financial markets are not really um, correlated. Uh, there's not really that much resistance or, or hesitation from the U.S. equities and, and U.S. indexes. Looking at the NASDAQ, yes, it is tech and, and the S&P, it's just absolutely rocketing up even though there is, you know, the riots and, and social unrest and unemployment's through the roof. You get GDP that is contracting by negative 32%. Or in the 30s, what was it, 32.9%, yeah. And, and the markets are booming. And yes, there is new liquidity, there is money printing, so money has to go somewhere. Usually it finds itself in financial assets. Like the, especially with the, with the world we live in today, you know, everyone's just low cost indexes. That's everyone's go-to. So these indexes are getting inflated if you, 
I forget that man's name. Um, the person who was in the big short, he talked about an index bubble. Um, I'm sure someone can, uh, Barry, I think his name is Barry. Uh, well, I'm not going to make this video too long, but you can find it later. Um, let's look at this here. What's, which play form, which play form plat platform is this? Okay. Uh, this is called trading view platform. It is uh, free. You can use it for free if you'd like, but I subscribe to it. It's absolutely awesome. It's the best charting platform that I personally ever used in my life. And then next one says, what's your average ROI? Uh, it depends on many factors. Sometimes the market's slow, sometimes the market's fast. I try to aim for like five, seven, ten percent um, on the total portfolio a month. Um, I'm not looking for a hundred percent gains a month. That's pretty unsustainable. You're going to have drawdown to a point where it's like 20, 30 percent of your account. I don't like that. So I try to stick with manageable numbers while extremely being disciplined with my risk. That's basically the name of the game. Try, try to let your find systems that allow to make your runners run using moving averages, just manually uh, moving your stop loss up, trailing stops, parabolic SARS, whatever the system is, is you, you got to have a system to Because sometimes, especially if you're in crypto, they'll just absolutely rock it and you'll have like 15 RR trades. So um, they don't happen super often, but if they do, that uh, is a huge payday and you won't really get paid like that unless you have systems that allow you to take advantage of volatility in favor to the upside or to the downside if you're shorting. So that's going to be my uh, little Q&A with TikTok. We're now going to go into another index here. Not really much to discuss on the Russell 2000. Let's look at the NASDAQ. So our ideal high was broken, came right back down. A little bit of uh, excess volatility here because we do have one, two, three validations and we have four validations of this descending zone. But we broke, retested that area, but then we failed. And then I'm sure stop losses were hit. Lots of sell pressure came in, but we did hold that previous low. So we did not make a lower low, which is a good sign. So we can take this. It was invalidated, not a very well-respected chart. And then now, ideally, what you'd be looking for is some break to the upside. Yes, you can see that this uh, zone is a zone of sensitivity, but because we have failed to make a higher high from this area, I would then just move it up one. And then we'd need to see a break and retest. And then we could also, if you really wanted to be safe, go to that previous low that we had, which is now holding as a nice level of resistance. Well, that's a pretty significant zone. I don't know if I'd want to do that. I'd rather go a little bit lower and have the price break, retest, and have a stop entry above that previous candle. So the momentum takes me into the trade. But the fact that we held that previous low is good to see. So we are still holding that nice structural demand zone. And I think the path of least resistance would definitely be towards the upside, kind of towards that 11K zone that we were hitting back in the 20th and 13th of July. So... Definitely more bullish if it breaks that zone, but um, that's going to be a pretty big if. The fact that we were unable to hold this previous resistance as a new level of support and actually break to the upside does indicate weakness. That would be, I would put a stop entry above that zone there for a possible entry and uh, did not, but that would be the system and the method that we use and uh, that would not trigger you in. So then we would then move the zone of sensitivity we do see it was a key zone right here and a candle closure right here so we do see that that's a key key area around 10.7 for the nq1 or the nasdaq 100 futures and then the vix not a whole lot to discuss it's just contracting in volatility if we do see a break in the descending zone as well as this high right here that's going to be an indication that we could see some increasing uh, volatility for the SPX, usually that is always to the downside. So then that could be in confluence with the SPX falling. So then we'd be looking for risk off assets to the upside. 
the US dollar has been just absolutely getting demolished. So we would finally see the US dollar gain some ground to the upside or at least find a low, I think. And then potentially, I think the Swiss franc and euro could be doing well. I think crypto will not be doing well if the S&P moves to the downside. We'll talk about the correlation between the S&P and Bitcoin in a little bit later in the video. But uh, we're just trying to understand what will happen. What are the ripple effects if the sentiment turns to a risk off move because we do see volatility is contracting to a point where we're getting to the apex. If we move to the downside, we could just see further moves. Let's, some, let's see this where it's just fading and that would be a very good position to be in for risk on exposure. So then we would be looking for longs in BTC, Ethereum, other alts that are relatively strong. But right now we're nearing a pretty pivotal point within the market. So I think what I'm doing is just uh, kind of making sure I am aware of what's gonna happen, being, on, being in front of the charts, but staying patient. Because right now I don't really think that uh, there's a whole lot of edge, there's a whole lot of momentum, but I do think that momentum is coming, so we will need to be aware of it and uh, try to capture that uh, opportunity that is coming in. So right now, just being patient basically. Gold and silver also are just kind of consolidating, so we'll see where they're gonna be heading, we'll see what the structure looks like a little bit later in the video. Quick look at the currencies here, this is gonna be the US dollar index or DXY. Quick look at the uh, questions here. All right, so let's look at DXY first. This is the US dollar currency index. Making a lower low, wow. So yeah, it's, it's still plummeting. I'm looking at that 93 zone as the last level of support. If we're looking back at the weekly chart, we can see it was a previous support and resistance at the low there definitely was a little support there and I'm just trying to understand where it's going to go and, and hold but at the end of the day I'm going to be looking to carry the momentum because it's just absolutely falling off a cliff right now and I'm not the one to be trying to call for the absolute bottom I'd rather carry the trend until it proves me wrong uh, trend trading is definitely my favorite form of trading reversals are uh, profitable for sure if, if you're able to capture them, but I find them less dependable personally. So I personally like to just trade the trend using wedges, triangles, bases, or channels. Stuff that I think I have edge trading through backtesting and knowing the stats. So not a whole lot of discussion on the DXY here. It's just creating series of lower lows and lower highs, weakness against the dollar. So the overall outlook in my opinion still looks bearish for the dollar but uh, i'm just trying to find potential levels where there could be a support zone so you got an unconfirmed zone right there because you see our candle closure our type a and then we do see a possible level of support there it's not super valid because we only have two validations of it so we would need to see this get rejected and then it moved to the upside in order for us to classify that as a level of support. And let's get rid of some of these. The 94 zone is a pretty significant area, so I'm gonna leave that there. I'll close this and then we'll look for a nice sideways channel right there. So we got one validation, two validation, and then three. So that for me is a valid descending trend line, which then creates our descending channel formation. And then let's get our, this has a little bit larger of a wick. So we want to capture that within the projection. And then I like to use red for my resistances and greens for my supports. And then I'll just put a little middle line there to kind of center me within the price action. So we have two options here in how we can approach a descending channel. Because the momentum is already to the downside, I'm gonna do the first option. So this is option number one. Option number one would be a melt down. So then we'd be looking for cells to carry the momentum. And what we need to see is a validation one more time of this of the support. So we have one, we have two, we need to see three. It could just come to the 
zone right there and then move to the downside breaking the previous low like so and you want to see it trend and trade below this key level of resistance holding it and respecting it with either type a or type b and then you're looking for possible stop entry above the previous low to trigger you in when the momentum comes to the downside that's your first option for a descending channel another way that you would be uh, possibly trading this is if it's going to be a bottoming out now if it's a bottoming out you, you do have to be careful because this is a pretty significant zone of resistance that you do have to take care of and understand so if we're going to get something like this a trade that would be coming from here to here would not be very significant. Your stop loss is here, maybe it's like 1.3 risk reward, which is not ideal. So ideal. So that's why I'm saying the reversal may not be the best suited trade in this situation, because if we do get a move like this, and then you see it start tra trading down, and then make a higher low, and then a higher low, that could be a great bottoming pattern but that particular trade itself of this descending channel would not have been a particularly great trade because you're gonna put your stop loss there. You're probably gonna break even or a little bit of a loss. So for reversals, I think I'd rather play it safe. That was number two. So that was number two. And that's number one. We'll see where it goes, but um, that is my opinion on the US dollar. A little bit of a quick look on some currencies here just to get a good understanding of risk on or risk off. We see the Eurozone and just overall currencies in Europe. GBP, we see the Swiss franc and we see the Euro absolutely, absolutely crush it recently, doing very, very well, relatively strong against things like the Australian dollar, New Zealand, US dollar, Japanese yen. So those are going to be the ones to kind of long, which is a little bit off. Um, I don't exactly know why those two currencies are doing so well, even though they're, in my opinion, considered somewhat risk off currencies. USD, JPY are very risk off. They're very correlated. GBP is risk on. And then Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar is definitely more speculative currencies. But, um, we will see. So someone says, which stock is this? So we're looking at currencies right now. And then the next on the list that we're going to be looking at right now is going to be commodities. So we'll look at the gold and silver ratio really quickly. We'll touch on it. And then we'll look at gold and then we'll look at silver. And then we're going to touch on crude oil, which actually looked like it. Wow. It took a pretty big dump. Wow. I did not see that. Yeah. This is the first time seeing it. So finally move to the downsides. We'll see if it's actually going to hold on the daily chart. We can see pretty well respected zone. And it's just a matter of if we're going to hold that zone. And then we got to understand that it's going to be consolidating for a little bit. So we got to find a key level that's going to be our zone of sensitivity. So then our overall structure will be somewhat of a topping pattern. And then we'll find that nice zone that allows us to capture good opportunities for continuation patterns on retests. Looking for wedges, triangles, all that good stuff. All right, uh, Fabio says, hello friends, how are you? I'm here to ask for your help to build uh, my house for my family and I would like, I don't really know how to build houses, my man. Sorry about that. What is USD SEK? I believe that's a currency. Swedish Krona. So you, what is USD SEK? So you are you are saying how many Krona does it take to purchase one US dollar? That's what you're asking. Uh, if I'm when I'm buying options, I do not trade options. I trade contracts so futures are cfds contracts for differences which are like futures except you don't get delivery they're perpetual contracts so it, like it's a very you're, you're basically 
your what does it mean if, when I'm buying options? Well, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. I don't really know what else to add on to your question here. Is it an index of both of these currencies? No, you're literally shorting one thing. Um, you're borrowing one currency and then buying another, right? So you're borrowing Swedish Krona and you're buying USD, right? That's what it means when you are longing USD SEK is you're borrowing Swedish Krona. You're literally borrowing it and you have to take it account to the carry cost. So you got to look at the interest rate and then you're buying US dollars and then you're going to you're get an interest rate from US dollars. So if you are pairing currencies that have very different interest rates, like the Mexican peso US dollar or like South African Rand US dollar, you're going to have different interest rates so you can have positive carry costs that you make money on. Um, so you're literally just borrowing one currency and then buying another. That's what pairs are. It's not an index of the currency or anything. You're just comparing one thing to another. So hopefully that answers your question. It's different than stock. It's uh, you're, comp you're, you're just borrowing. You're literally borrowing from the broker, from the bank and then buying another one. All right, so let's look at some metals here. Oh, someone's calling me. I will have to call them later. All right, so let's look at the gold and silver ratio really quickly. We're getting a bit of a bounce, which is good. We're getting a nice consolidation. So we're looking for something along the lines of this. On a smaller time frame, that was a nice ascending wedge formation where you got a nice ascending zone and an ascending zone, creating an ascending wedge. Right now, doesn't really see, I don't really see a formation really happening. So we want to see a nice solid price action pattern that allows us to get a good, good understanding of the possible breakout point, which it's still very early in the formation. So what I'm going to be doing is just patiently waiting for the next solid formation on the metals here. Let's look at gold now. Gold has a nice, this is that key 1910 level that we're looking at, which is going to be a key level of support. We do see 1974 is a pretty significant zone of resistance that we will be keeping an eye on. It would be nice to see an ascending triangle formation, something like that. So then we do still have a decent amount of time before we actually could break out, although that would be a formation that would give me a entry signal to long. So let's go. I'm just trying to find the best possible place to put a level of support. We need three validations. So we got one right there, two and three. Not looking for any shorts on gold or silver because it's just so bullish. Why would you be Shorting something on a bull run just does not make sense. And then let's look kind of at the smaller time frames, but I don't really need to be looking at this point because we do have, let's go back to the hour, a decent amount of time before this does have a possible breakout. It would be really nice to see one more test of the higher low and you're looking for a key level of a higher high and you're looking for a higher low. You could be looking for triangles, wedges, bases, or that would be an ascending triangle, but a base would be a horizontal zone on the bottom as well. But that's the type of structure that I would like to be looking for in order to gain exposure to the upside on gold, because I definitely think that uh, there's opportunity for it to run more. I know it's been on an absolute bull run, but um, we can see if, it, if it's going to consolidate, that's completely a possible uh, move to the upside. We can see if we're going back to 2010, 9, 8, you know, gold does go on these huge moves where it just keeps on climbing and then in a span of 80 days it climbs over 20%. You know, and we can see in a span of 50 days it climbs 25%. So it's not like these moves are impossible, it can fall quickly as well. That's why we have stop losses. But um, it's not impossible for gold to move quite aggressively, quite quite quickly. It's moved eight percent in fourteen days. So definitely, if it's gonna be, it's gonna be if it's gonna be giving me a nice continuation pattern, I'm definitely gonna be looking to trade it. 
but it's still a little bit too early. I'd like to see a little bit more of a formation on this before I look to gain any exposure again. Now looking at silver, let's go to the daily chart here. Big doji. All right, so uh, someone said, thank you again, no problem. 2020 is the upside down. Where will XRP top out on this run? We'll look at cryptos in a little bit. If you'd like, I'll take a look at XRP. Gonna get a little bit of water and we'll continue on. All right, so pretty big doji, which is a uncertainty candle, indecision. Did hold that previous low on the daily, which was really good to see, talking about this zone right here. So around 22.30, 22.25, pretty in, important zone of support. And we can also see this zone is a pretty key zone as well. So we can see key level of resistance on a large time frame, key level of resistance, key level of resistance. We just blew right past it without even really respecting it. We did have a candle closure at that level. But that's going to be the key level of demand if this breaks that I'd like to see hold for silver. I'm looking for continuation patterns. I'm not looking for any shorts. So that's going to be my bias. It's very, very bullish. Silver has a lot to climb uh, in catching up before we see anything close to where gold is. Gold's basically at its all-time high or close to it. It hit over 2K back in the late 70s, early 80s. I don't exactly know when, but... At the peak of the inflation when CPI numbers and federal funds rates were through the roof and silver is not even close to the high of 2011 where it's around 50 bucks. <clears throat> so it has a lot of climbing to do in terms of the rate at uh, which it's climbing compared to gold. And it's going to be different but silver does appreciate at a greater rate when there's a metals bull run. Pretty big shooting, spot, shooting star on the weekly, which is an absolutely fantastic to see. But uh, overall, we're still holding that support, which is good to, good to see. So on the four hour, let's zoom in. We have a high, we have a lower high, which isn't fantastic. Don't really want to be drawing this trend line because it's just not really respected. So we're forming these series of lower highs. We could be looking for a descending trend line or a descending wedge, something along the lines of that. So we could be just be holding this really nicely and then you could be looking for something on, along the lines of that or somewhere. I wouldn't want to put it all the way here because that's just too descending. I just don't think that would, that could be a possibility, but uh, I just don't think it's really ready quite yet for a nice structure yet. I think just had a massive move to the upside. It's going to need some time like we've seen here consolidated and then we got to move up. We traded that here consolidated and we traded that. So I think uh, it's just gonna need a little bit of time here before it gives us a nice continuation pattern to the upside. But that is what I'm gonna be looking for. I'm not looking for shorts, I'm just looking for triangles. So ascending, descending, symmetrical or wedges, ascending, descending or bases, which are just sideways channels. So that's basically what I'm gonna be looking for and I don't really see it. So I'll just stay patient and wait for an opportunity for silver. It's less structured than gold, in my opinion. All right, so let's take a look at WTI, Western Texas Intermediate Crude Oil, because that's uh, definitely a potential top, it looks like. I'm just going to see if I can draw any trend lines that may respect that zone here. Not really. I thought this high had a potential, but there's definitely nothing really. We can go from the bottom. Doesn't I don't really love that. I'll just stick with the key level of resistance, turn from a key level of support multiple times here. So we do see that around the $42 range is holding pretty well for a level of a resistance. We do see a little bit of topping here where it's failing to make a significant higher high. We can draw an ascending trend line connecting the higher highs creating a resistance zone. And then we also see on the daily time frame, the previous resistance turned into a new level of support that's more ascending than the resistance, creating an ascending wedge formation. So 
It definitely looks like it's weakening, obviously, with the huge move to the downside. We've got around three hours left before this daily candle closes. Especially in a structure like this, I like to see candle closures on large time frames. So I would really like to see a daily closure below the minor level of support, which would be right around here. We can see it was a previous level of resistance and turned into a new level of support. Close below there, that's really nice to see. And then let's look at the next zone. That's a key level of significance, which would be this zone right here. We can see it was a previous level of support, turned into resistance, turned into support, turned into support. So that's gonna be the next zone that I'd really like to see break. And that could give me a little bit more clarity with kind of the top there. And then for where we really wanna see the zone break, we look for major levels on large time frames. So that's already indicated right there. So I'm just gonna extend that a little bit further. And that's a key zone as well. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that area. So around 36. I think going to be where we might start topping and then really get some aggressive pushes from the sellers. Yeah, so a break below 39 would indicate the topping formation and then we'd just be looking for lower highs. So it's going to be like that. And then you're looking for that to be the high and then you start getting these lower highs. You could draw a descending trend line there, creating a descending triangle formation. And you're looking for a break, retest, some squeeze, and then a continuation down. So definitely we got a little bit of time before the ideal situation. Firstly, I'd like to see the daily candle close, but that's my opinion on WTI crude oil. I think that's what it looks like it's potentially gonna be doing. So that's going to be the completion of the global macro update. We're now going to get right into the crypto market update here. It does look like uh, Chainlink's actually breaking out. I was looking at Chainlink. Also looking at a few other things here. BTC is doing pretty well. We can talk about that, but uh, that's going to be one thing I'm looking at. Oh, shit. Look at that. I mean, it even broke this zone. All right, well, we are looking for entries on Ethereum. I'll tell you that much. Initially, got around seven minutes left until this candle closes. Initially, I was loving the possible entry with the retest at 325. Did not give me it. Yeah, the 15 isn't really giving me anything either. Nice little base there. Well, I'm uh, slowly setting up an order here for Ethereum completely live, but let me tell you, Ethereum looks bullish. <laughs> I'll just say that. In terms of BTC, I think that it's forming a pretty well-respected ascending triangle formation. We did just break the nice little support zone right here, turned into resistance. So we got a nice base right there, and that was the key zone. And it looks like it's testing that last high before it makes its way back to the key level of resistance. So overall looking pretty bullish for BTC, although the breakout point that would, uh, for me, be an entry would be actually the 11.3-ish K zone. That would be for me the point where I look to enter BTC anyways. And then we also see the market cap for BTC dominance move to the downside, holding this previous resistance as a new, or previous support as a new level of resistance. That's really great to see. So 
So let's just Just doing my order here, setting it up, knowing how much I need, all that stuff. Because you do have to risk the exact same amount on each trade. You can't, uh, yeah, you you can't be random about that. Definitely not. So that is going to be a possible entry. Okay, so let's continue on with this video here. We already talked about the dominance. Let's quickly look at the total two here because it did break and hold. It looks like above the previous resistance resistance right there on the daily chart. We see a lot of wicks here. Lots of action within the else. Lots of volatility, but uh, it does look like we're still remaining bullish pushing to the upside don't really love going too far into the smaller time frames but overall if we close above that zone that's going to be a very significant level and it looks like we're just accelerating in the speed at which we're moving to the upside so we're looking for continuation patterns within many of these alts that uh, we're looking at within this video today so definitely we're looking for continuation patterns and quick look at the btc volatility it is moving back to the upside so Definitely remember the previous times that we've had extremely low volatility back in October, November of 2018, we went from 6.2K to 3.2K. Last time, again, was in March of 2019, we went from 4.2K to 14K, and we were at, let's say, 9.8K to where we're going to go. So overall, I think that the crypto market is looking really bullish, and... Um, we're looking for continuation patterns. So first off, let's look at Chainlink because I think Chainlink's gonna be a really solid potential. I'd like to see it break above this zone right here, 750. Has not really fully broken out of that zone yet on the one hour chart. I may just make sure that this is in line like so. And then we will look to make sure that's good, that's good. All right, so yeah, that's gonna be the zone that I'm looking to see break, right around there. And then you're looking for a retest of the round seven and a half, and then that would be a possible entry for uh, link paired with USDT. And then we're gonna be looking at VeChain, not a whole lot of discussion, still not broken our key zone. Around 0 0.018 is gonna be the key zone that I'd like to see break for VeChain, so that would be the next opportunity, if it does uh, actually push up to the upside, Cardano does look like it's breaking here. We got a little move to the upside, still holding on to that support zone, but it's not really able to uh, get that bullish volume that we're looking for. So let's get this descending zone in there.
All right. I'm just putting a All right, so let's go back to Cardano. I just had to just edit some orders and stuff to make sure that the order does get triggered. Not absolutely perfect, but uh, this is a key level of support at around 0.134. Let's just indicate that in green because we can see it was a previous key level of resistance that's now acting as a nice new level of support. So you can also classify this as a descending triangle pattern. So all we're doing is just connecting the descending zones. Was not able to get that strong push to the upside that we're looking for just yet, but um, it has been a relatively strong uh, coin that's been doing pretty well, has been a little bit less aggressive recently, but um, we are going to try to continue to look for continuation patterns to the upside here on Cardano. BNB, not much to talk about to be completely honest. There I'm doing really well. I just entered to be completely honest on the stop entry right there, stop loss right there. We'll see where it goes. It's just going to break out. I'm very happy with holding on. Yeah, BTC is doing pretty well too. Yeah, we'll see where it goes. Let's start off with the daily. Broke this major significant zone, and it looks like it's trying to break on the weekly. This zone right here. And we can see candle closure could not close above that zone. Previous bullish candle was closing right up against that zone. And now we're getting a breakout where we've got three days, but this weekly candle may close higher than it has since August 2018. So very, very bullish potential opportunity for Ethereum just on a new high breakout. And then when we do go into a smaller time frame, we're now consolidating above that key zone at around 307. And we were contracting in volatility, really, really squeezing in the movement of the price action. And then now we're getting a breakout here. Did not get any sort of retest much of it. So uh, had to be pretty quick and nimble. But it looks like it's really trying to push to the upside here. We'll see where it goes. Yeah, pretty decent push. Okay, so that's going to be the discussion on Ethereum. Super bullish on it. If it does come back to 329, that would be a good entry. To be completely honest, I hope it doesn't. But if it does break even, not the end of the world. And we can uh, look for another opportunity. But if it keeps on running, BTC is running, it looks like as well, moving to a key level of resistance there. So let's just bring this up like so. And then let's also just look at BTC. It does look like it's testing that high there. If it breaks above that high, I think it's going to come to 1130. Around 1130 up there.
Okay, so let's look at XRP because someone did suggest XRP. Let's go to another page here. Let's do IOTA. XRP USDT. Not a bad structure actually. Hasn't broken out yet. Oh, this is the five minute. Yeah, not a bad structure. I just wanted to make sure I had a good understanding of where I was on the chart. Okay. Yeah, XRP looks decent if it does break. That's a really good structure. Around that zone would be great. So let's mark it down. 245, 0.245 for XRP paired with USDT would be the breakout zone for me that you'd wanna see a retest. So. Let's just give an example. Let's just say you want something like this, ideally. That would be a really good situation because you could wait for the retest. It retests all the way here. You could either get a re-entry when it breaks the previous high right there in line with the descending zone like that. That could be a re-entry. You could even just use a limit right there to get the retest, whatever the structure you're looking for. I think that would be a good option. So XRP does look pretty bullish, although I do want to make sure that uh, the large time frames look great as well. Let's get rid of all that. Although right now we are right at a key zone. Yeah, we're right at it. So if it does break out, I think it will break out pretty aggressive, but you do have to make sure that you're trying to get the best possible best, best possible entry. Yeah, it's looking like a pretty good squeeze, pretty well respected. If you want to be a little bit more safe, you can go up to 24.6 and wait for a retest at that zone on the 15 minute chart. It would just be a little bit move of an up here just for a little bit more of a validation that you are getting a move to the upside. And with that, you also want to be looking for volume to be increasing. So you want to know that there are buyers coming in and uh, going to be bidding up the asset that you're already entering in an ideal world. All right, so that's basically going to be the entire crypto market update. Don't think I missed anything. We will quickly look at the relative strength and weakness, although I did do this beforehand. Elgo is at 8%. Wow, VET, we're looking at VET. IOTA, I was looking at IOTA. It's not absolutely awesome. KNC, we are looking at KNC as well. So let's just take a step back. That was Ethereum. Let's look at the XRP side. Oh, I did two XRPs. Carbon network, yeah, it's definitely not ready yet, but I think it will be. Oh, wow, Ethereum's doing well. So um, if anyone has any questions, drop them down, but I think that will be the end of this video. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.